High Plains Technology Center, turning education and training into workplace success. Oh, back to school, back to school, to prove to dad that I'm not a fool. High Plains Technology Center, education at the speed of business. School is now in session. Good morning. This is Katie Shirley, High Plains Technology Center Marketing Coordinator, filling in for um, Taylor Burnett again today. Um, I've got my guest with me today. It is... Hi, it's Mickey McDonald. (laughs) It's Mickey McDonald. Uh, Mickey is our PN Director, and we're going to talk all about PN here in a minute. I thought I'd give um, some all High Plains Technology Center news first. So last week we had um, another CDL graduation. On Friday we had eight students graduate, and they have their CDL now. And our next class will begin in April, so you can contact Tammy Kelm to enroll in that class, um, 580-571-6159. Or you can find her contact info on our website at hptc.edu. And this weekend at the Ag Mechanics Contest, we had several students win many awards, um, very competitive, lots of entries. And two of our students actually brought home the top two um, prestigious awards from White's Welding. Monty Bond um, won $2,500, and then Dane Harris won $1,500. And so that was pretty exciting. Monty is in welding, and Dane is in diesel. And then we had a Skills USA contest coming up actually this Friday, so we'll see how they do. Um. Enrollment is open for all of our programs, our daytime programs um, for adults and homeschool. Um, our counselor, Audra Halderman, works with each of the our sending schools with the um, sophomores and juniors to enroll. So um, parents, just heads up that she's visiting with them about that. But anyone else that wants to enroll... They can um, call the school and ask for Mrs. Halderman, and she's giving lots of tours right now of all the programs. So if you're not for sure which program would be best for you or you just kind of want to see what all we offer, you can um, holler at her and she'll give you a tour. And then last week I had uh, Mrs. McDowell with me. She's the business and marketing instructor, and we were sharing all about the DECA um, contest that was coming up that afternoon. And we found out that um, Tucker West from Fargo Gage actually won his um, candidacy for collegiate vice president. So um, next year he'll be um, coming back to High Plains, and that is the year he'll actually have his reign of um, his office. And then next Wednesday, we have a Lead and Learn Luncheon. We're partnering with Woodward Main Street. Um, The speakers are Bill Fanning and Kevin Kanzler. And you can find that info on our social media. Then we have a basic Spanish class coming in March. And then a certified medication aid class in April. Then we've got several CNA classes, one starting next Monday. There's two in April and one in June. And then the very exciting news of a meat processing class, uh, May 6th, May 20th, and May 27th. And they're going to do um, beef, goat, and sheep. So that's exciting. And the famous Bob Jones, local, um, you call him a butcher. I don't know if you call him a butcher in the produce at um, United. So he's going to be teaching that class. So... That is kind of things that have happened and things that are coming. And now we can talk about practical nursing. So good morning. Good morning. Um, So right now we have enrollment is open for practical nursing. So um, so you guys are in the thick of this class right now, aren't you? We are. We are um, finishing up clinical three, which is the very last thing before they go out for preceptorship, which is... Exciting. Yeah, we're, we're winding down. We're wow. so very close to ending. It's, and it's exciting. May, do you have yeah, a graduation date? We do. <laughs> it's the second uh, Thursday in May. Second so, Thursday. Yes, okay. I apologize for not knowing the exact date right now. And so this program actually runs from August 
kind of is it's usually pretty early August, right? Yeah, usually it's at least the uh, Thursday or Friday, the first week. Um, and I know our August summit kind of is different this year, so um, we haven't completely gathered that. But it'll be I would look at the first week of August is when we'll start. Okay. And so this current class, how many students do you all have right now? We have 14 students. So That's a pretty good size class. It is. We've tried to increase every time, and of course, keeping um, the level of um, expertise and knowledge and things. So we've almost doubled our numbers this year. Very proud of that. Awesome. And then your faculty, you have? Um, so we have Caitlin Vandewerk and Nikki Foster are our um, faculty, and I pop in. Every when needed, yeah. yeah, and I get to go around, and like I said, right now they're in clinicals I'm from all areas, in Buffalo, Sealing. That's what Supply. I was going to say. Let's give a shout out to our <laughs> clinical yeah. sites. So Sealing, Buffalo, Fort Supply, Woodward, of course, Shattuck. We have clinics in Laverne, um, the Buffalo Clinic. Um, oh, and this year we started Chase Stewart with um, uh-huh. the schools, so that's very that exciting, and they've really enjoyed that. And is that in her Shattuck site, or is it's it's here in the Woodward schools? Is that okay mm-hmm. in the Woodward schools? Yes. Yeah, oh, okay. A school you nurse. said Shay Stewart. Yes. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah, so she's um, and they they love that. It's been oh, that is neat. Very impressed how much she does, and yeah. we've got a lot. Uh, well, at least several of them were very interested in maybe doing something like yeah. that as a school nurse. I bet she's very busy right mm-hmm. now. She is. <laughs> it is. Calls every other day with with sick kiddos. Um, so, what's the difference between preceptorship? And clinical? So clinical is where they follow the actual faculty member. And then at times, like, you know, they can't be everywhere. So it could be like an ER or ICU, that kind of thing. And they follow a licensed personnel. Okay. So they do all that. They actually have clinical one, two, and three. And then, like I said, they were fixed and finished that. And they all and, branch off and go uh-huh. kind of their own way yeah, under and different preceptors. After they've done all these areas, they can come back to us and ask, hey, I'd like to see this area and do, it's 120 hours, and they will follow that. I mean, it could be 5.30 in the morning till they do 12-hour shifts. They could do 8s and 10s. They literally follow whatever the the nurse does. Okay. So it gives them a real feel, you know, cut the apron strings, but a real feel of what the true LPM will do. Awesome. So on the clinical, that means they're either with um, Nikki or Caitlin. At a clinical site, and is it the whole class with them, or is it broke up? So we break it up, but, you know, they are always housed on medical surgical floor because that's where most of our NCLEX, which is the the big test that we take, um, that's where they get most of the knowledge. But then they're housed also. They can go to the ER, the ICU, the OR, where our faculty's in-house with them, so they go around on them. The other areas is when I come into play, and I'll go around in Northwest Behavioral, every area, where our students are, but they always are under a licensed nurse. Okay. RN or LPN. That's awesome. So th- all the way up until recently, when you started clinicals, students were in the classroom from August until when you did clinicals last month. Did you start some? So we do um, basic clinicals, what we call our clinical one, and that's in the long-term nurse aid um, kind of uh, knowledge base there. And we do that right off the bat, September. Uh-huh. I mean, we get their feet wet in clinical very quickly. But the bulk of our clinical starts in um, January. Okay. And then, so tell us about the program up until there, um, just pretty much the, the basics of what a cla- a day would look like. So a regular day is you get, you come in at 8, and then you'll finish at 4.30. But we do block scheduling is what we call it. So each faculty member will have about, you know, three and a half to four hours, one in the a.m. and one in the p.m., so you get the expertise of both. Uh-huh. Um, and then each one of them will have their own. Like we have anatomy and um, pharmacology, pediatrics, med surge, that kind of thing. And they split, clini- uh, excuse me, the um, theory portion of it. Okay. So, so and then when we go to clinical, they're actually in clinical the okay. whole time. for Like we've, we've been doing three-week stints, Monday through Friday, three weeks at a time. Wow. Yeah, it's it's exciting. Yeah, I bet they enjoy that after being in the classroom and lots of, like you said, theory and then tests, right? Yeah, lots, lots of, of tests. tests. But the theory is really good, and that's why we do clinicals and those long stints to apply their critical thinking that, yeah. they, that they have to have in order to be successful in, okay. in, the, in the field. And that's um, pretty neat, the clinical, where they really are getting a good idea of, of which area they are are liking. Kind of like you said, with going around with the school nurse, kind of mm-hmm. seeing which 
which part of the health field they would want to go into. Yeah, it gets them that where most of our people seem to come, I'm going to be a baby nurse, I'm going to do OB. But then they, they get into they, it. Yeah, they may go to mental health and think, my goodness, this is where I'm meant to be. Yeah. So it gives them all clinics and all the avenues and different fields that they're able to work in. Um, and then by the time they get done, a lot of them actually already have jobs um, and have uh, at least a level of interest where they want to apply to. Right. And that's neat that they're making connections mm-hmm. already in that. And um, lots of them. The industry is able to kind of get an eye on some of the nurses they might want to recruit. Absolutely. <laughs> and that's what we say when you're in the clinical side. It is a job. Yeah, um, right. You're applying for a job every day by the yep. seeing. They can see your work ethic, how you treat patients, how you treat yeah. staff. Um, yeah. It's, it's good. I actually remember um, Dr. Lehman at one of the graduations talked about some stories of students he remembered in those settings and situations mm-hmm. and the impact, the positive impact they made. Um, on him in those times. So um, tell us a little bit about the prerequisites to get into the program. Yeah, so our advanced standing courses we have are medical terminology, and all these can be um, taken at um, Curatech at Hotlines. And we also have long-term nurse A that is an advanced standing course. Um, Both of those can be taken at health careers, or if you don't, you know, if you, you can't do that, we offer them evening courses and courses during the week um, and summer courses so you can complete all those by the time we finish right or before application sorry is due so that is they're they're going to be wanting to watch our um, short-term classes to catch those dates of and if you look right now the application it gives you those dates right there on the link if you go to our high plane site for the pn um, adult program okay and then um, tell us the part about the um, ACT testing. Yeah, so we have to, by the Board of Nursing Standards, have some sort of pre-admission test. Everybody knows about an ACT, and that's one of the reasons we've chosen. It's very common and very, most people know what that's about or even have taken it at some point in their life. Even someone as old as me has taken the right. ACT. <laughs> so, yeah, our ACT, the composite, which is your big score, needs to be a 17. But we also wanted to look and give other um people different ways to get in mm-hmm. and that way you could do reading and math and we honed it down to those two are the are really the two you need to be okay. able to be successful in the program so if you have a reading score of 17 or a math score of 17 but your composite is lower you still can get into the okay. program good to know um and then tell us the cost so we are looking right now the in district cost is around 7000 and out of district cost is $11000 okay and in district, you can find that on our website if you are wondering if you are in our district or not. Um, when we've just added Beaver County, so all of Beaver County is now in district also. And so that's a benefit because I know we usually have students that travel pretty far. What are some of the, are there very far away students this class? Yeah, we have some from Kansas. It's a good hour and 15 plus minute drive. And are they driving every day? They are. They're driving wow. every day. And we have some from Laverne. And yeah. Um, yeah, it's a good hike for a lot of them. But, you know, they're they're driven and and they know what they want. And they've done success, very successful. Even if you live out of the area, I'm talking like an hour drive. Most of them are very, very successful. Right. And so tell us kind of the path students take once they graduate, some of the options some of them take. Oh, goodness. How much time do we have? There are so <laughs> many options. Even locally, people think you need to go outside of the local area, but but you really don't. We have, um, of course, your medical surgical floors. Um, we have ER and OR, sometimes OB. You can do hospice, mm-hmm. home health. Yep. All the clinics and and clinics are they do a very lot a, a whole bunch that you might not think that blood blood draws and um and by the way I want I forgot Dr Carcandall we've we're going to his office too which has been magnificent oh, awesome. and is that a newer it is um, it's a brand new site for, for us preceptorship or clinic yeah clinic and preceptorship okay awesome and we have Sarah. Sarah um, Lichen Walter, Lich and Walter mm-hmm. there, and she also um, so she graduated the program. Was that last year, um, or is it two already? I want to say it's two already. Okay, and she does teach our phlebotomy yes. evening classes for us, and she's working hard out there at Dr. Kirkendall's. And then talk about continuing education. Some of them decide to go on and do their RN. Yeah, you can do. We get right now, and I'll just we're working on our trick articulation agreement with Northwestern, and right now we get about twenty eight hours of cre- college credit. You have to pass your NCLEX, 
okay. um, exam. But after that, if you wanted to apply out at um, Northwestern, you'd be able to get those hours, which is very exciting. That's yeah, a lot. That of, is. Is that newer? We just signed the newest contract. Okay. Yes. Okay. It is. But, but you don't have to go there. There's other colleges that you would just go and they offer different amount of hours depending on the school. Right. If you want to do um, a two-year RN, bachelor's RN, master's RN, um, there's so many options right now. Awesome. Okay. So we're about out of time. So what the final thing we need to probably share is the deadline for applying. It's June 1. June 1st. Is our de- okay. Yes. So I appreciate if, if um, please call if you need anything. I said I can do interviews or tours or anything y'all would like. Um, awesome. And go ahead and maybe give your office number. It is 580-571-6101. Okay. So um, there is a whole page on our website for practical nursing. That would be really informational for you to study and find out. So um, and if you're not following us on social media, you should go ahead and do that. All right. Well, thank you, Mickey. Thank you. I appreciate it. Have a great day.